台北国际电脑展 Computex 里头有一大焦点，就是物联网的各种应用。而全球的晶片系制裁龙头厂商安谋，在智慧型手机跟平板取得先机之后，他们不但打赢了 Intel， 现在也积极来跨足物联网的商机。而从产业的龙头角度，又怎么样来看物联网的趋势呢？请看看今天的关键对话。关键时刻掌握关键对话。大家好，我是楚文。你能想象吗？当你回到家的时候，只要坐在椅子上，电视就自动打开了。而手上的手机马上就变成了遥控器，可以来操作电视。这就是未来物联网生活的概念。你我的生活将会越来越方便。而我们今天就非常荣幸邀请到了全球晶片 IP 的龙头厂安谋执行长 Simon s i g u r s 来接受我们的专访，一起来聊聊在物联网生活的时代下有哪些新的趋势。Hello, nice to meet you, Simon. Hello there. We know that this year in the Computex, everyone talks about Internet of Things, and even the chairman of TSMC, Morris John, also mentioned about the importance of Internet of Things. We are not familiar with Internet of Things, so what's its concept, and what will it change our life? The Internet of Things is a very, very broad term, and、uh, people talk about it in many different ways, and it can mean different things. I think for Uh, consumers, we're going to see the Internet of Things、uh, impact our lives in lots of different ways. We're going to see sensors and processors connected to the Internet, embedded in lots of different things. It might be in your watch, in some、uh, item of clothing that's on you, in a sensor that's monitoring your state of health,、um, or it might be in the environment around you. It may be that there's a sensor connected to every、uh, light post in the street, in every parking space. Um, in every turnstile, in every train station, it may be that the technology is being used to help us find our way around,、uh, help monitor our, our state of health, or help just make the environment a more efficient and effective place. And we know that the critical part of Internet of Things that is wearable devices. And we see that you wear、uh, a smartwatch on your wrist.、Mm -hmm. So, how will a smartwatch, this kind of wearable devices application in the Internet of Things? Uh, so smartwatches and, and wearable devices are, are one application of the Internet of Things.、Uh, as you observe, I have a smartwatch here, and I, I find it really useful. It's paired with my phone, and any alert that appears on my phone can also appear on my wrist, and that's just very convenient、um, as I go about、uh, my sort of business life、uh, to be able to be、uh, updated in a very convenient way with, with what's going on around. So in this case, very useful for me.、Um, there are many other smartwatches and wearable devices being developed. Uh, many of which are, are linked to uh, monitoring uh, one's state of physical activity、um, or, or your health. There's been lots of developments in that recently. So to, to have devices about you that are helping you、uh, understand about your, your state of health, I think, is a very important development and will be very useful for lots of people. So do you wear this all day long? Uh, well, I do take it off at night because <laughs>、um, it's not too much use to me while I'm trying to sleep.、Um, I also have a, a, a Fitbit device which is tracking、uh, my activity during the day,、um, and you know th these devices are giving me very useful input. So, do you think that one day the smartwatch will replace the smartphone? Well, I think this sort of smartwatch is very much complementary to the smartphone.、Um, we are seeing people. Looking to develop a complete smartphone in a watch form factor,、um, and for some people that might be the the right device that they want to carry with them.、Um, I think what's very interesting to see right now is how many different types of devices are being developed,、um, which gives consumers lots of choice. If you just want a watch, or if you just want a phone, phones different form factors, tablets, clamshell devices. There are lots and lots of different devices you can choose from, and I think that's a great thing. Someone called Internet of Things is the third industrial revolution that will bring tremendous change. Do you agree with the, with this? And what is the impact for IT industry? Well, I think the Internet of Things can bring tremendous change. I think that、uh, pretty much any company can benefit from the Internet of Things, whether it's understanding your supply chain better, understanding how products in your factory are moving through and and being developed. Whether it's understanding how your customer is using your product and, and getting real-time feedback about it, I think there are opportunities for many, many different companies to benefit from the Internet of Things, and it will create、uh, new opportunities in terms of products and services 
uh, that companies can bring to their customers. So I think it's a, there's huge potential here. And on your perspective, do you think that Taiwanese technology industry have the advantage in getting into the Internet of, of Things market? We know that ARM established CPU Design Center in Taiwan. Why do you do that? What's your reason? Well, I think Taiwan is, is famous for a very fast-moving, very innovative place. Um, and over the last uh, few decades has, has grown a very um, a competent and, and sophisticated engineering capability um, in, in what is a relatively small island. It, it's really quite phenomenal. Um, a few years ago, we opened a small design center uh, here in Taiwan, uh, in Xinchu, um, focused on uh, processor implementation, working very closely with our foundry partners. Um, and what we announced this week was that we'll be expanding that design center, um, looking to uh, build on, on the capabilities that are, that are here in terms of engineering talent um, and develop uh, a CPU design center, only our fourth a CPU design center um, from all our global offices. Uh, so, you know, this is a big opportunity for us, we see, to um, you know, work with the local engineering talent work with supporting our customers uh, in this development of the Internet of Things. And how do you see the quality of Taiwan's IT talents? What's their advantage and the disadvantage? Well, some of the most sophisticated semiconductor devices in the world are being developed here in Taiwan. Um, and so, you know, we see that as a very strong engineering talent, and that's why we are looking to expand here. Um, Arm has about 3,000 employees, uh, about 2,000 of which are engineers. We have a number of design centers, uh, but very few are, are focused on CPU development. Um, because of the, you know, what we, where we see the talent opportunity here, um, leads us to, to believe that we can be successful by developing another CPU design team here. And how do you see the global economy this year? And how's your prediction of a growth rate of semiconductor market this year and next year? Some experts are positive on the semiconductor market. Do you agree with this? Uh, the semiconductor industry, I think, will, will grow, um, but, but only in, in a relatively small way. Um, but I think in the markets that, that ARM is, is uh, um, participating in, um, you know, there, there is quite significant growth. Uh, if we take, if we take smartphones, for example, uh, we're anticipating about 1.2 billion smartphones to be uh, sold this year. Um, and that's, you know, that, that's a large number of, of any product, that is a large number. Um, so lots of innovation going on, um, and as the market expands in the long term, we think there's great uh, opportunity for all of our licensees. And we know that you have been CEO for almost one year. And what's the biggest challenge that you face in this year? Um, in 2014, I, I think just uh, executing on the opportunities that we have in, in making sure that we are uh, focused in terms of uh, delivering to our customers, uh, supporting their use of, uh, of our technology, and making sure we are really thinking about the long term. Um, Arm is a very successful business, and when you are being successful, it's very easy to forget about what you need to do for the long term. And so, you know, where I spend my time is kind of trying to balance between the short term that's, that's urgent and the long term that's important. Um, and really, that, that is the job of the CEO, to make sure that you have those things in balance. And in your mind, what's the definition for a good CEO? Ah, <laughs> that's, a, that's, a, that's a tough question. <laughs> I, I think, yeah, as I said, you've got, to, you've got to be continually balancing lots of things that are going on. It's like being a juggler with you know, maybe 10 balls in the air at any one time. Um, you've got to focus on the short term, make sure the business is executing, making sure that you're um, hiring the right people, making sure you've got the right people in the right place so that you can capitalize on every opportunity uh, and making sure that we're working with our other customers in, in the right way and surveying what is going on in the market, being uh, in touch with what is going on. Um, so as the CEO, you've got to make sure that all of that is happening. You can't do it all yourself. It's really important that the team that you have to work with uh, provides complementary skills to make sure that all of those um, kind of aspects can be covered. Um, and I think a successful CEO is one who makes sure that he has a very strong team with him, um, one that communicates very well internally and externally, um, and can help synthesize all of the external um, inputs that you get to try and drive the company in the right direction. It's a, it's a many kind of dimensional task, 
um, but it's, uh, it's the best job I can think of. Thank you, Simon. 物联网的时代已经震慑来临了，而这被称作是第三次的工业革命，正在悄悄地改变着你我的生活。而台湾的厂商能不能够抓紧这股商机，也影响着我们未来的全球竞争力。